here's one of those videos I would like you to pay attention to, especially if you're planning on pouring any concrete in the future. Now, the first thing you need to know about setting up forms is that they need to be firmly secured, braced off, and they need to be in the right spot. And uh, of course, they need to be straight. They need to be straight. So this, just think of those three things as a nice place to start. First, they got to be in the right spot. Second, firmly secured. And third, nice and straight. And that would include in both directions. If they're not straight in both directions, you could end up with bulges in the concrete. Um, so the top might be straight, but then you have a big bow in, in the wall. Now, the reason why I made this video was I was taking some pictures of a house and I came across this. You can see the concrete sticking out. Here we've got a nice big bulge. And here's the bulge. And this isn't even close. You know, all of this is going to be either need to be chipped out or the wall is going to need to be furred out. And I would imagine it would be cheaper to fur the wall out than it would to chip chip all of this out. And of course, I got a picture at the end of the video, I believe, where it's showing how you fur the walls out. But this right here is going to need to be chipped out. You know, the area over here where it's hanging over, again, the same thing. Not as bad over here as it is over here. Uh, you're going to need to do something with it. You know, if you put the, uh, if you're going to stucco this house and you put your weep screen on, it's not going to be straight. So again, this wall is going to need to be furred out or the concrete's going to need to be chipped. I mean, look at this big protrusion here. What the heck caused that? You know, what? I, I can only guess. Uh, I mean, I really, I can't even guess. What the heck? Looks like they formed it incorrectly there. And here's kind of a good example. I don't know. I should have got a better shot. You can almost see where this this might not be plumb. It could actually be bowing out. And even if it isn't, this is something that I see a lot. You'll have the concrete nice and straight on the top, but if you put a level on it, um, it might be off an inch in uh, a foot. And I see that a lot more than I would like to. Here's the other side. Doesn't look too bad over here. Uh, of course, this is going to have to be chipped. Now, this almost looks like it might have been better just to move the wall over a little bit. Um, because the anchor bolts look like they, they look look like it could have went over another half inch, but I don't know how that would have affected the roof. Now here's another problem: if you don't remove the forms the same day, if you pour the concrete then go back the next day to remove the forms, you could end up with these lines. And these lines are basically, if you had a two by eight here and a two by eight on the bottom, or a two by eight and a two by six. This is the concrete that would get in between the forms that where the boards weren't perfectly straight. If you had a two by eight at the top here and it had a, let's say a crown in it, if you were to run a string from one end of a 12 foot board, let's say to the other end, a straight line, you might have a half inch bow in it. Well, these boards don't work good for concrete footings. Um, for one, they're not going to give you a, a nice straight line at the top. And for two, um, you could end up with these little pockets throughout the thing. Now, if you're, if you're stripping the forms that day, even if you strip them the next day, you can take and knock all this off with a hammer. Uh, but again, why do that? If you form it right the first time, you're not going to end up with uh, lines. And again, you might end up with a line more like this than a big chunk like this. And again, I've seen these things half inch to three quarters of an inch. I've seen just big hunks of concrete sticking out. You know, they're they're half inch wide and they're sticking out three quarters of an inch, you know. And it is. Sometimes you can just break them off, but you're not going to just be able to grab a hammer and break everything off. Um, you're going to have to, you might have to grab a chisel and start chiseling some of this stuff off or a chipping hammer. Here's another thing. If it's not straight, um, you could end up with a bow like this. So we've got, I'm, I'm sure that it's, it's easy to snap a straight line and build a wall straight if the lumber's uh, fairly straight. So this tells me the concrete's probably off. And again, it wasn't probably firmly, two things, it either wasn't firmly secured or it wasn't, uh, um, or the form board wasn't uh, in the right spot to begin with. 
So it wasn't, they didn't uh, run a string and straighten everything up. That's usually what creates something like this. And however, if it's not firmly secured, you, you do have it straight, but it's not firmly secured when you're pouring your concrete. The weight of the concrete will actually push these weaker sections that don't have enough stakes on them will push push them out and you'll end up with bows like these that somebody has to deal with after after the problem you know after the after the concrete's poured and here's something too you can see they got a two by four wall here and someone went ahead and just furred this out so they're going to have to add a jam extension onto the door jam here to make this work and that's not going to be that big of a deal it would be a lot di more difficult to chip this section out to chip a what's this a two inch section out here so this is what i mean by furring out areas you can actually fur them out instead of chipping the uh, concrete out and there are other ways there are other things you can do instead of furring the entire wall out you could always add a band on the bottom you know if you just ran a two by six on the bottom if that's what you needed You'd have to uh, figure out how that would work, of course, once it died into doors like this. But it w that would be a way to save money. If you need, need more information on that, I'll make another video. Leave a comment in the comment area. And again, this is another way to fur it out. You're, you're a half inch out. Just grab some half inch strips of uh, plywood or OSB and fur the wall out instead of chipping it. I mean, furring the wall out is going to be a lot easier than chipping something like this. Trust me. Uh, trust me on that one. I've chipped out large sections and it is a nightmare. Back to the original picture of the video. Again, firmly braced so that when the concrete is poured, it's not going to put pressure on the forms and um, spread them apart. Make sure it's in the right spot. Last thing you want to do is end up putting all your rebar in, um, pouring everything, and then when you go to uh, start laying everything out for your walls, you find out that you're an inch off um, or uh, even more. What a nightmare! And again, even an inch could be a an inch could be the same thing as being five inches off when it comes to some of the things that uh, you're building. So anyway, that's it for the video. Don't forget to hit the old thumbs up button if you like what you see. Leave any questions in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible.